Now, right to your hosts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Hello there and welcome to Down the Garden Path where we discuss down-to-earth tips and advice while doing our best to help you seasonally manage your garden and landscape. I'm Joanne Shaw, owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design, and with me is my co-host and co-author, Matthew Dressing. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Matthew Dressing, owner of Natural Affinity Garden Design. As landscape designers and gardeners, we believe it's important and possible to have great gardens, which are sustainable and low maintenance, and we want to help you make it happen. That's right. And as we're gardening is moving inside, we are joined tonight by Aaron Deacon from Bios Nutrients to talk about feeding your indoor plants naturally by improving the soil health. That's right. Hello. So if you Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very um, much. Guys. Matt will read a little bit about you to intro you to the show. <laughs> Beautiful. That's yeah, that's right. So Aaron first learned about the environmental damage caused by synthetic fertilizers and pesticides during college and set out after graduation to begin growing for himself. He received a license from Health Canada to grow medicinal cannabis and decided to com go completely organic. He was discouraged by the results from products that were available on the market and began to study to learn how plants grow naturally. After discovering biology within the soil that feed on organic matter is what feeds plants, he began practicing fermentation to add biology and organic matter back to the soil and mimic mother nature. Through six years of research and testing, he now makes completely natural fertilizers and pesticides that heal the soil and educates communities on how mother nature grows. So yes, welcome to the show, Aaron. Thank you very much. Sorry, I got in a little early there. <laughs> That's, That's okay. All right. <laughs> Gotta love the Zoom delay sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. yeah so, welcome to the show. Me. We're Thank excited. Excited to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're excited to have you. Yes. So, tell us more about um, your journey on discovering the biology in the soil. How did you come to that aha moment, uh, and why is all that biology so important? Absolutely. Yeah. So I stumbled across it when I was first looking at how to make my own soil. So when I first got my medicinal license, I bought tons of bags of uh, pro mix soil, like vegetable and herb for the cannabis that I was growing. And I was still having to fertilize all the time as per kind of instructions on forums. And then at that point, when I started digging more into soil and kind of how to make it for yourself, I stumbled upon something called super soil. So it was pretty popular in the cannabis growing world because it was basically packed full of nutrients because okay. cannabis is a very heavy feeder um, because it produces a very heavy harvest. So people were throwing all kinds of blood meal, bone meal, kelp, alfalfa, gypsum, just as many nutrients as they could into the soil mix. And then they'd make the composition different. So we'd have different amounts of your base. So either like a peat moss or a cocoa, you'd have your aeration, which would be like rice hulls or grow stones or perlite or things like that. And you'd have some drainage as well. And they're basically combining all of these ingredients together, putting it into a sealed container or like getting it moist and kind of covering it with something and letting it cook is oh. what they called it for okay. usually like 30 to 60 days. And okay. what that did was it, allowed like the moisture inside is almost like a composting yeah. technique mm -hmm. so the heat from that method would start to break down those nutrients so that they would make them more available to the plants or plant available rather than if you planted directly into a mix like that you would burn your plants um, so that was kind of my introduction to soil building and the process of kind of cooking your soil to start breaking down nutrients for your plant um, so I thought that was very interesting. So I started making my own soils based on that method. And then I started reading more and more about biology and soil first through worms, basically worms, adding worms to your soil and them adding different microbes like bacteria, because they mm -hmm. process their food just like we do with bacteria. So their poop is very high in microbial yeah. content as well as plant available nutrients. 
so that got me very interested and then yeah kind of the more i went down that rabbit hole i learned that a lot of that decomposition process was happening because of microbes in the soil it wasn't necessarily just heat like a lot of heat was produced by microbes that were active um and then i remember reading something about microbes actually feeding your plants and them having a relationship with the roots of the plant and that was kind of the aha moment of okay so it's actually the microbes that are decomposing mm -hmm. nutrients in soil and they're yeah. the plant and <laughs> it was very interesting to learn that and then yeah learned that it is a symbiotic relationship it's not just one way and the interesting thing is that through photosynthesis plants produce different substances that secrete substances out of their roots like okay. proteins and starches mm -hmm. you basically look at it as like baking a cake in the <laughs> soil that's kind of the plant's job is to provide all the raw materials for baking a cake and that is amazing food for the life that's in the soil and then basically that life will eat that food that the plant has given them in exchange for plant available nutrients from the soil and protection from diseases and pests so yeah that just kind of blew my mind a little bit and kind of opened yeah. it to the world of <laughs> what was yeah. actually in soil and how plants feed naturally and how they've been fertilizing themselves and protecting themselves for you know their entire existence on yeah. land it reminds me of because there's been talk about that um if you've written like hidden life of trees and, and those books like what mm -hmm. happens in the forest right often people yes. say that like nobody you know nobody has to um you know rake the leaves in the forest or nobody has to fertilize <laughs> the trees in the forest right like exactly. they, it just they just it just does it um yeah. for themselves yet in our gardens and in our house plants and stuff we're tr always trying to mess with things definitely so, yeah and I know it's pretty commonplace to pull a lot of like debris off of your garden because it can harbor pests. Same with indoors. I know that was a big thing kind of when I started doing a little more research on indoor mm -hmm. plants and people were very hesitant to leave any organic matter on their soil um, yeah. because it could harbor pests. But yeah, at the end of the day, it is a, a system that just needs to be maintained and balanced and you can't have the good without the bad in a way. So yes, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a, we talk on the show often about the importance of and especially this time of year when everybody's like getting the leaf bags out and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, it's okay. <laughs> there's no hurry. There's no, um, you know, just leave the leaves fall. It's they'll decompose, yeah. you know, it's funny now that I see like so many bags. Well, now that I'm aware of it and I see so many bags of leaves yeah. and sticks and stuff, it's like a gold mine to me on the streets. Like there's been many times <laughs> where I think to myself, like, should I just go like take people's bags from the street and like pour it <laughs> on my garden? Cause they're giving away free fertilizer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that is the case. So the ingredients. Oh, do we have questions, Matt? I know. No, no, you just got to me first. Got to me first. <laughs> um, so if you have questions for Aaron, if you're curious about the product, you know, please uh, send us an email. Um, so because it's, you know, available to ship in US and Canada. So that is good. Um, yes. What makes it safe to do so is that you can because normally we can't mail to the US from Canada. For sure. So it is because there's no synthetics in it. So once you get into any kind of synthetic products, then that's okay. where the regulations are much more strict because a product high in nitrates, which a lot of fertilizers are, or ammonia can be mm. used for things like bomb making yep. or yeah, can, nefarious can, things yes. like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot more difficult to get products like that into the US. Okay. Um, whereas there's no synthetics in this. It's all just natural ingredients. Yeah, the beginning of it, like if you read the ingredients, it sounds like breakfast, Aaron. Like it's wheat, <laughs> wheat bran, barley, molasses, water, lactobacillus, which like yogurt, right? Like yes. I'm just, uh, you know, alfalfa meal. Like I'm thinking, you know, is it edible? <laughs> but it just so this must have been quite the <laughs> quite the experiment, or how you got to these ingredients. It was, yeah. So it's mostly, and yeah, they are like technically edible they are safe to consume but okay. i can't recommend that because they're yeah. not an edible product but we do yeah. recommend like it is safe for pets which is great so you know if animals consume oh. it then they're not going to die it's technically a probiotic for them um so yeah it's all and like some of the ingredients we use are actually human grade like the diatomaceous earth we use is a food grade diatomaceous earth um a lot of the products like alfalfa and kelp meal is found in a lot of animal supplements and human supplements as well because they're packed full of minerals um so yeah like what's good for our bodies are generally good for soil as well which is really cool okay um but yeah it started off with a base recipe from korea so they've been doing these methods for a few thousand years at least and they knew that soil 
was this beautiful sea of life. And they knew that in order to keep plants healthy and grow them healthy and also maintain, you know, the health of the planet while they're doing that and not just taking from it, they had to add that life back to the soil as well as organic matter. So it's very interesting how they came across it. A lot of it's related to the human body. So our mm -hmm. stomachs use microbes to digest food and then basically can become like available nutrients. So when you ferment different products with microbes, it will break down the nutrients in whatever you're using and it will make them available to the plant. And it can also just help kind of increase the amount of biology that's within it. Um, so usually for bacteria, some sort of quick carbohydrate is used. So you can use rice bran, wheat bran, oats, barley, things like that, that they can consume very easily. Okay. And it's almost using the little pieces of bran as a vehicle for the microbes. So they'll kind of ferment it. And then as you dry it, they're basically a carrier for the microbes that can be stored. Um, so that was kind of the original recipe was just using some form of, you know, a quick carbohydrate and then culturing microbes from the air because we are breathing microbes all the time. They're all over our skin. They're everywhere. Um, so you can culture those and you can ferment different things with them and basically add biology and organic matter back to your soil, which is, you know, same as a leaf falling on the ground and decomposing and just recreating that relationship. So they uh, were very good at mimicking that and just had really cool recipes and really unique ways of fermentation. And so I kind of just followed that and just kind of let my imagination run wild and tried to ferment many different things and add different <laughs> ingredients. And that's kind of how it came to be now. Um, a lot of the ingredients that I add to this, I was using in cannabis production before to amend soil, to make that super soil. So I kind of figured why not just add all this in as well and just make the kind of a one-stop shop for your product and have everything you need. Nice. So mm. I think we, we've kind of gone in behind the science of it and how it works. Um, and <laughs> I think we've painted this picture of we're applying something to the soil. Um, so what is it called that we're, your product is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So, I so, it, <laughs> so, so okay, yours. <laughs> Yes. So it is called Bios Nutrients. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so what it is, it's a, a fermented product that we make. And we created it to provide education to teach people the natural relationships of soil, basically what it needs, just organic matter, microbial cultures. And yeah, so we make our fertilizer to reestablish the healthy ecosystem of soils, whether it's in your house plants or in your garden. And now I noticed on the fertilizer, um, there isn't the classic uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium numbers. Yes. So and I think that's what everybody kind of equates fertilizers mm -hmm. to, um, but it's different. It's because of that microbial breakdown. So whatever you exactly. put on the soil, it's going to take that, break that down and process that. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. So I was going to put an MPK on it originally. Um it is considered a form of marketing now, which is interesting because people can see it and they have a general idea of what might be mm -hmm. in it or like the higher okay. the number, they assume the better it is or the more it's mm -hmm. going to feed their plants. Um, when in reality, a lot of the nutrients that are in a synthetic product that has an MPK on it is not actually all available to your plant. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it can get leached out of the soil. So you're not actually getting what's advertised. So that's kind of why I figured maybe avoid that, you know, misconception or misleading of people um, and not, you know, allow them to get hung up in just those three numbers as the value of the product, but rather, you know, the science behind how it works. And it's hard to really equate an MPK to something like this. Like it does have a 322 for like the nutrient quality that's in it, like the kelp meal, the alfalfa meal, the wheat bran itself has nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium in it. Mm -hmm. And that'll break down slowly over time. But uh, really the magic is going to be the biology that's in it that you're adding to the soil because those living organisms will feed your plants 24-7. You're not just relying on those three numbers to be the thing that's feeding your plant, mm. <clears throat> which is a big one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, so when you started using it, did you started using it on your cannabis plants? I did. Yeah. And, and then that's where you found, cause you'd obviously been growing without it beforehand. So that's, and so did you mm -hmm. notice like, what did, what made you think like, aha, I've got something here. For sure. So I noticed just the overall increase in growth 
especially when it came to fruiting time. So the overall yield as well as the like taste and flavor coming off it was increased much more. And the reason for that is because the plant now has access to more nutrients. So by using, you know, bios on my cannabis when it first started, it just allowed the plant to absorb much more nutrients. So it could develop much faster. Um, and yeah, like the flavors were much better because <clears throat> plants need lots of phosphorus to flower and fruit properly, mm -hmm. no matter what you're growing in the garden. Even if you have Hoyas or orca, orchids or something that flowers in your home, your plants need phosphorus to be able to produce that flower properly. Um, and plants cannot absorb phosphorus on their own. They need the help of fungi mainly to mm -hmm. absorb that nutrient and bring it back to the plant. So that was the big thing I got out of us, like having that product to keep adding biology and organic matter to your soil really just increased the amount of nutrients available to the plants and it just kept the soil much healthier much more moist it uh yeah it just changed my growing completely okay mm -hmm. and for, and i think typically don't people use like more like water soluble fertilizers right like where they're watering they do yeah and it is that was the one tricky thing with beginning to start so i kind of went from super soils to living soils is what it was called Okay. Um, and to build a like fully established ecosystem in your soil that's going to feed your plants, it does take time. It's not just something that happens overnight. And that's the same with your garden, anything like it does take a bit of time to reestablish yeah. that. So when you are doing that, depending on what you're growing, like cannabis, for example, because it is such a heavy feeder, you do have to supplement during that establishment phase. So I did have to use like some general organics is what they were called they're like a natural liquid fertilizer but just to give your plants a bit of a boost well mm -hmm. it's establishing that relationship with microbes is very important so i don't uh like kind of rule out liquid fertilizers at all because they really are a great way to give quick absorption to your plants so if you okay. have a deficiency or something giving your plants a like diluted liquid fertilizer obviously i'd always stick with organic like a cold press seaweed or cold press fish or something Mm -hmm. It's going to allow your plant to absorb those nutrients really quickly and just prevents any type of deficiency from occurring. So it is definitely uh, like variety is key. I'm definitely not just telling people like you can just put this on your soil and it's going to be a fix all like you may have to kind of do some supplementation as you're building that ecosystem okay. back up. Yeah, that's fair. So mm -hmm. describe your product to our listeners since it's not, you know, that's what we forget. We're on, uh, we're on radio, right? For sure. the containers are holding up and then material in our hands. Definitely. Um, both Matt and I have a package so, for our listeners. So, um, mm. so yeah, it's not a water soluble. And like I said, it sounded a little bit like breakfast, but why don't you describe <laughs> it and, uh, and how we use it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it is a fermented brand. We've got lots of other ingredients in there as well. And all you do is simply sprinkle it on top of your soil as a top dressing. And what it's going to do is recreate a leaf or different organic matter falling on top of the soil. And then it's going to add the biology that's going to help break that down. So it'll feed your plants right away. And it'll be a long form, long-term source of nutrition for your plants. Um, you can also use it as a soil amendment. So you just mix it in with your soil like any other soil amendment. Um, and then we also have a probiotic, which is a liquid bacteria culture and cane sugar. So you can spray that on your leaves because leaves are covered in microbes as well. If you have beneficial ones, it's going to prevent any kind of diseases like powdery mildews or rust mildews. Um, and it also will increase terpene production, which is the fruits and flavors of fruits and vegetables. And then we have our yucca extract, which comes from the roots <clears throat> of the yucca shittigara plant. It is a type of yucca that grows in the South American desert and it helps foliar sprays be more effective. So you add it to any foliar spray, it helps it stick on the leaves, coat them and just make any pesticide or foliar feed way more effective. And it's also great for rehydrating soils. So if you have anything that's peat moss based, it can become hydrophobic if it dries too much. So by adding our yucca extract to it or any yucca extract, you rehydrate it very effectively. Um, so they're all three products that I used to use for total plant health. And that's kind of why I figured they were a great lineup to give people their fertilizer, their quick release and slow release in one, their supplement with the probiotic that fights disease, and then the yuga extract, which can help rehydrate and help make foliar sprays more effective. Wonderful. Awesome. So we've talked about cannabis, using it on cannabis. What other plants can we be using it on? Just, just our indoor plants? Can we do it outside? containers 
For sure. So you can use it on everything. So every plant in the world needs to create that relationship with biology in the soil to effectively absorb nutrients and give itself some form of protection from disease. Um, so container plants, especially because they don't have a large volume of soil to establish that ecosystem. So by adding something like bios, where you're constantly reapplying microbes and organic matter, it's going to help make that soil much more fertile. Same with indoor plants, any kind of potted plant, you need to make sure you're constantly adding organic matter and microbes because it is such a small volume. Um, and then with the outdoor plants, absolutely, they still need that relationship. They need mm. constant organic matter, especially with fruits and vegetables, because you're pulling lots of nutrients out of the soil. So if you're not putting anything back in, then that's when you're going to have to start supplementing with liquid fertilizers. Okay. So we have a few listener questions that have popped in. Awesome. Um, Gloria has asked, how often do we need to use this? How often can you use this? Beautiful. So I recommend once a month for fast growing plants, fruits, vegetables, any kind of tropical plants. And then once every other month for things like succulents or cacti. Um, okay. The reason for that is because succulents and cacti generally need less of a nutrient requirement. If you have faster growing plants, then you're going to be constantly re-adding that organic matter that's going to be breaking down. And with the addition of more microbes, it's just going to be feeding your plants more and more. Um, so yeah, that's more than enough. You don't have to use it every other week like most traditional mm -hmm. fertilizers. So it does last twice as long. Um, and you just get that benefit of the slow release from the wheat bran and the different ingredients that you can see. And then the fast release from the microbes that you can't see in it. Wonderful. Um... Kelly has written in, hello, Joanne and Matt, uh, listening in again. Hey, is Aaron related to John Deacon of the band Queen? Just asking. <laughs> I yeah, am, actually. Get that. <laughs> Are you really? I am, yeah. Yeah, he is a uh, distant uncle, which is interesting. Yeah, because my is grandma awesome. is from England. And uh, yeah, I just learned that a few years ago. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, there you, cool. go. there you go, Kelly. <laughs> there you go, Kelly. <laughs> Shane is also written in saying, Hi, Garden Path. Does this stuff have a long shelf life? I have a habit of using stuff one time and then throwing it in the garbage and then coming back to it <laughs> in a year or two. No, garage. Sorry, he says oh, garage. garage. Sorry, garage. I know, no. <laughs> Sorry, <Shane laughs> garage. And I'm, I'm guilty of that too. Like you put it or in the cupboard, right? You put it away. I bring it in from the garage and, and bring it inside and then I forget about it and, you know, buy more next year kind of thing. So Absolutely. that's a good question. Yes. So that was a big thing with all of our products. I wanted to make sure they were shelf stable for a very long time. So our probiotic and our fertilizer is shelf stable for basically an unlimited period of time, as long as it doesn't get wet. So with the fertilizer, it's been completely dried out. What happens then is that the microbes that are alive in it when it's moist will basically give offspring. And those offspring will be in the form of spores. So they'll be inactive and they won't become active again until you add water. So it is completely shelf stable. I've had stuff for five years that is still just as active once you add water to it. Um, okay. Same with the probiotic, it's stabilized with sugars. So until you add water to it, it's good for years and years. Um, the yucca extract does have a one year shelf life on it, but I have not really seen a decline in efficacy of it after that period of time. So, okay. Neat. What about um, if, like, in the garage, like if you've kept it in the cold, like, is there any impact there? No, no. So it's completely uh, temperature tolerant as well. Okay. Temperature tolerant. Yeah. That's good. Yes. Yeah, that, that was an important be... one. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry yeah, that was going to be one of my questions too. If you use it outside, um, are the biotics overwinterable or do they survive the extreme colds uh, in the soils like up here in, in Canada? They will. Yeah. So it will only get uh, like microbes are very like, um, oh, what's the word like resistant or. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Resili resilient? resilient resilient yes that is it okay they're that's the word resilient. our word we had to like yes. audition for which our <laughs> <Thank word>. you. <laughs> no problem <laughs> so yeah they're like they've adapted to survive over billions of years there's okay. microbes in space that can basically tolerate the most extreme temperatures on either end um even when they're active when they're in an act inactive form they can tolerate anything so there's no really heat or cold that you could put it in you could leave it outside and minus 40 for the winter and it would still be just fine as long as it doesn't get wet right yeah so you don't lose all that extra or that hard work 
you put yes. into building your little <laughs> ecosystem. Yeah, or, exactly. You know, yes, yeah. And then if you have like your garden beds, they won't die off. They'll basically kind of recede a little bit deeper into the soil where it's a bit warmer, but snow is an amazing insulator. So yes. your soil is still going to be super active during the winter. That's why it's so important to make sure you add organic matter in the fall. You don't just kind of bag it all up and get rid of it because if you leave that on your soil, the snow is going to insulate that and that is going to be broken down over the winter time because it's still super active. Nice. I had a question about watering. So I think a lot of people use just their local tap water for yes. filled with chlorines and fluorides and whoever else knows mm-hmm. what else. But <laughs> um or even well water. Like do these additives to our drinking water, do they affect the microbes in the ecosystem inside? They do. Yeah, absolutely. So especially chlorine, chlorine yeah. will basically kill biology in the soil. So it can really mm-hmm. stress out your soil over time um, to the point where it becomes basically void of life. Um, it's very difficult to kill everything in soil because biology is everywhere, but by constantly adding chlorine, even, you know, hard water, it's so mineral rich that it can actually end up stressing the microbes out to the point of death. So if uh, like, I'll use tap water here. Thankfully, we have a chlorine water softener, so it filters out the chlorine here. Um, nice. It's very handy. But if you don't have that, let your water sit out for 24 hours. The chlorine will evaporate. If your city uses chloramine, it does not evaporate, and it's very difficult to get rid of. So in that case, don't water your plants with that if you can avoid it. Um, use rainwater or grow by you know some RO water or something like that. Um, but yeah, chloramine is not great. Um, fluoride, I'm not sure. I know it's a pretty mm-hmm. low quantity. Um, and fluoride is used by plants in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for minerals, the mineral quantity of tap water can actually be beneficial for some plants. Um, so even here in Guelph, it is very hard water in Guelph. Um, but like plants need minerals at the end of the day. And if you can provide that in water, like if you look at spring water or an ocean, it's so packed full of mineral content. Um, and that's just beneficial for plants and soil, but too much of it can be harmful for sure. Cause it can compact soil and prevent the uptake of nutrients and protect, prevent the uptake of water as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely if you have chlorine, let it evaporate or, um, go buy water that is a little bit cleaner, but what about the water through our fridge. Like I'm thinking, should I, cause I do that. I don't, I just don't t- tape tap water. I use tap water. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and sometimes my, um, um, cause I use a soda stream for my fuzzy water and then in the morning yeah. it's not fuzzy anymore. So I dump it in my plant. <laughs> so, um, but whenever it's the filtered water through our fridge, like, you know, if you've got a fridge that has that filtered water, would that, mm-hmm. does that get rid of the chlorine? Uh, it really depends on the filter. If it's just mm-hmm. like a, a Brita even is technically mm-hmm. not even a water filter. It's just, uh, it more so gets out any kind of things that are in water that can cause a bad flavor. Okay. Um, it won't get rid of like any heavy metals or chlorine or anything like that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. Chlorine will evaporate. Um, my biggest recommendation, like if you do use tap water is going to be pH because the pH of our tap water is generally very high, like nine or above. And our plants need a pH of, you know, a range of five to 6.5, depending on the plants. If your soil and your water is not in that range, your plant cannot access nutrients. So over time, if you're constantly watering with that, your plant will just become sickly because it can't access any food anymore. So uh, that would be my biggest recommendation. Like if you want to use tap water still, just make sure you pH it and you'll most likely be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. As we reach the bottom of the hour, (laughs) I'm going to jump in and do our little mid show station ID. Uh, Just to say thank you, everyone, for joining us here live on Reality Radio 101. And thank you to those who are listening via a downloaded podcast. We appreciate you, too. I'm Matthew Dressing here with my co-host and co-author, Joanne Shaw, and you're listening to Down the Garden Path. Joanne and I enjoy hosting Down the Garden Path each week, bringing you interesting and relevant topics to help you achieve a great garden. We learn right along from our research and from the wonderful guests like Aaron Deacon, who join us here on the show. Don't forget, you can spend more time with us down the garden path. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Down the Garden Path Podcast is our handle there. And don't forget, you can find lots of wonderful past episodes and content 
on all of your favorite podcast providers. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new content. And please don't forget to like, share, and leave us a comment. We love hearing from our listeners. So you can always write us here directly, perhaps tonight if you have some questions questions about BIOS nutrients and how that is going to improve your soil and plant health, you can write us at down the garden path podcast at hotmail.com. Don't forget you can find Joanne at down the number two earth.ca and myself at www.naturalaffinity.ca. Now Aaron, I don't think we've mentioned where we can find your products. I mean we've described all these wonderful benefits, but how do our people, our listeners, uh, get a, their hands on them? Absolutely. So we have a website, biosnutrients.com.ca, if you were in Canada, and you can get all of our products there. You can use uh, D, down DTGP15 for 15% off your order right now, thanks to lovely Matt and Joanne. And uh, yeah, so you can get them online. And we also have lots of local stores across Canada. So BC, um, you know, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia, kind of all over now. And then lots of places in the U.S. now too. So we're trying to expand quite a bit to offer local options in the U.S. Um, so yeah, we've got about 60 retail locations now across Canada and the U.S., wow. which is great. So That's great. definitely uh, lots of options for sure. Yeah. And we should mention that uh, Matt and I met you la- a couple weeks ago at the Toronto Flower Market. Yes. And uh, where there's going to be the last Toronto Flower Market for those in the GTA. The last flower market <laughs> is uh, this Saturday and uh, we'll both be there again. Right. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> so you can find so if you come down, you can buy a book and get it signed and also visit uh, Aaron at his booth and pick up some product yeah, for your plant. Combo. So we have to do like a Toronto flower market promo as well absolutely. to let everybody know because we do have a big listenership in the GTA. So uh, um, awesome. so it's Thanksgiving weekend, but it's a most one of the most popular flower markets um of the season for uh, for them and uh we would love to see everybody there wouldn't we absolutely yeah it's such a cool spot i'm really glad that we got to meet there as well it's yeah an amazing market yeah me too so those of you who might not want to know where that toronto flower market is you're going to end up going to 1001 queen street west in toronto so 1001 queen street west i think the next major street is down by Ossington and Queen Street okay. um, or lower Ossington and Queen Street. So check us out. Yeah, we'd love to see you guys. Yeah, we have we'll post on our social media, but it's it's 10 to 3 on Saturday, October 8th. That's right. Yeah. So we've talked about um, applying bios, how we can use bios. Um, what else do we need to know about bios to get the most out of our wonderful product for sure um ooh, that's a great question <laughs> did, we, did we cover it all already I know. it's definitely uh i tried to make it as simple to use as possible so it's um yeah i would say you've got that's actually everything a great question. you need to know yeah, well, no, I mean, yeah let's, I let's go so. over that again like you sprinkle it so it's not right. something you have to dilute it's not something that you have to yes. like mix into your soil so it is just sprinkling the top of your plants right Exactly. Yeah. So if you have the established not plants, the plants, like, but the yes. top of the soil, at <laughs> the base Definitely. of the plant. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope I've done like a pretty good job kind of explaining it. Sometimes I know I go off on a little bit of a tangent into like <laughs> the science part of it, but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I've made it to be super easy to use. It's yeah. Literally just a sprinkling for any established plants um, and mix it into soil. If you're doing any transplanting or anything like that is very important. Um, and yeah, it's, extremely simple makes a huge difference on growth because your plants can access nutrients um with both the probiotic and the fertilizer because it has biology it can actually make plants more resistant to pests as well which is really okay. cool so mm-hmm. reestablishing that ecosystem you will have less issues with pests because your plants can become stronger and they can fight them off much easier um Ooh, you can make the it white TM fuzz. Files. Did you want to, did you want to oh, talk about yes. the white fuzz? That's an important yes. thing. I love it. So there is <laughs> really clear instructions on the package. Nice little stick figure uh, instructions. So you have made it very straightforward. It's just challenge <laughs> of, com- uh, of explaining that verbally, right? Versus, For sure. Yes. Uh, 
versus uh, 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 in person. So, um, but yes, you mentioned that once you sprinkle it on the top of the surface of your soil, of, of your plant in your pot, um, sometimes you might see some white fuzz, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that is a great, thank you, Joanne. I appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah, once you sprinkle it on water is what's going to activate the fertilizer while the biology that's in is going to reawaken with the addition of water. So sprinkle it on, add your water, and you're going to notice a white fuzz start to grow usually within about two to three days. And that is not mold. It is a healthy bacteria culture. It is used in a lot of antibiotics. It is what makes soil smell sweet and healthy. So it's essential for healthy soil and a healthy plant. Um, so it's nothing to be scared of at all. <laughs> and it will <laughs> die back naturally over time. It's okay. basically just um, very active because it can start breaking down the wheat bran and the nutrients that are in it and just start making them available for your plant. Oh, very interesting. Do you, do you find that as the bacteria starts to break down um, peat and the organics within, for example, our, our peat-based soils, do you find that we have to top dress them often with additional peat or compost? You found over the experiments is the root mass or the soil start to be depleted a bit? I haven't found that. No, no, oh, it's, yeah. um, I have heard that if you put too much biology in soil, that it can increase de decomposition so much to the point that you have to keep adding organic matter. Right. Um, yeah. Kind of the nice thing with bios is that you're adding both. You're not just adding biology to it. So you're kind of replenishing the organic matter that it would be decomposing in the soil anyway. So you're kind of just making it a, a recirculatory system. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, there you mentioned about outside, sorry, Matt, you mentioned about outside, but I wondered if, had you, have you done any experimenting? Cause it is like going to be shortly bulb planting season, whether it's garlic yes. bulbs for food or um, cause you mentioned vegetables, fruit and vegetables, as mm -hmm. well as flowering bulbs. Have you done any tests to see like, uh, improving improvement in, in that? Cause I know people are always using blood meal or bone meal, um, mm -hmm. that type of thing. For sure. So I haven't actually done an experimenting with any bulbs. Um, but if you did basically a kind of mix the bios into the soil, just as you were to do with the blood and bone meal before you plant it. Um, it's going to act the same way. Okay. So basically what's going to happen is it's going to start decomposing nutrients that are underneath that bulb that are already within the soil because there are nutrients there. It just, mm -hmm. the plant needs access to them. And then the nice thing about that is when your roots of your bulb start to grow out, they're going to have direct access to the biology that's within bios. So they're going to culture those roots right away with the beneficial bacteria which is really going to get them on a good start for growth and just protecting them as well from disease while they're establishing their root systems. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend it. I haven't done too much experimenting on it, but I've done lots of experimenting with basically repotting a propagated plant into a pot with bios in it and just getting the biology on those fresh roots as fast as possible oh, okay. is very important. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm, my experiment. <laughs> I know, I know. In my head. <laughs> I know. And did you see what Eric has written in saying, Matt, you have competition. Your guest tonight sounds like you. Um, <laughs> PhD <laughs> botanist. Love you guys. Yeah, we, we joke on the show, Aaron, that Matt, Matt he, his face, just like yours, goes all like yeah. sciencey and stuff. And, the, and like, I'm just comic relief here. Sure. And you guys are like the science <laughs> explaining. So, yes. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. And I'll have to talk to you. Definitely. Maybe Aaron, I can do some kind of experiment in my garden with some bulbs or something maybe we can talk about you know yeah that'd be amazing if i'm gonna I'd... plant some anyways i i you know might you know we could always try that because i was thinking of doing Absolutely. um somebody had given me the idea of doing um like in the vegetable vegetable garden that we're putting to bed to actually yep. plant bulbs for cutting in the spring before you have to do you know put your vegetables in i'm like ha huh, make double use Definitely. of that space right that's a good idea. Um, yeah. yeah. So, cause I don't need any more necessarily in my garden, but I'd love to have some for cutting in the spring. So, mm -hmm, so that might sure. be a perfect kind of controlled situation to kind of test out um, the product. So we can look uh, into that. Yeah. yeah. I'd be curious if like uh, bulbs would help break up compacted soil as well. I, I'd imagine mm -hmm. they would like, cause if I know some people have issues with like clay soils or, mm -hmm. so I'd be interested, curious yeah. if you planted bulbs in like a big garden bed, if you could start decompacting that. I don't yeah. know, I'm always interested in experiments too. So I'm glad when other mm -hmm. people are because I can yes. only experiment so much on my own. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and we we did a show last week talking about bringing, like saving our annuals and bringing our plants inside 
mm-hmm. um, you know, and then often we're then having to like, just put them quiet and dark and, and not quiet, but dark and put <laughs> them away. Um, now is, but then in the spring, like, so when we get to like February, March, when we're having to bring them back out again and kind of rehydrate them and re-nutrient, this also mm-hmm. seems like it might be like a gentle approach to doing that. Right. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So you're just going to basically allow your plant to start ner- absorbing nutrients right away in the amount that it needs. So mm-hmm. you're not forcing it upon it, um, which can happen with other synthetics or liquid fertilizers. Um, and then especially with our yucca extract, it's a really great way to rehydrate those plants that you're bringing out for that season. Um, so you can do a little soak with that is really great, especially with the probiotic too. So for that, I think the probiotic and the yucca would be most beneficial for kind of reintroducing your plants after their hibernation period and just allowing them to get a quick little boost of the minerals that they need, as well as the biology that's going to protect them. Very nice. So speaking about biology, what about some of the other products that we see on the market? We see things like Mike and Root Rescue that are the fungus, Mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. Probably safe to say, just being, again, part of that overall ecosystem, BIOS is going to play uh, friendly with these other biology-based products or these other soil, natural soil conditioners. Absolutely, yeah. So variety is key in soil, especially when it comes to biology. There's trillions and trillions of different species of bacteria and fungi and different things in the soil that are essential for plant health. So the more that you can add in, the better. Um, the only issue I find now with a lot of microbial products is that they focus too much on specific varieties. So they mm-hmm. don't look at it as an entire ecosystem. They have basically kind of found in a lab that, okay, this bacteria does this. Let's put this bacteria and this bacteria in this product and sell it as that. But what happens is they kind of get into a numbers game. Uh, right. We need to have as many bacteria in this as possible, like billions and billions of CFU per gram. And you end up kind of messing up the ecosystem of that soil because you're adding so much of just two species into that. And it can just kind of screw up the entire balance and it can actually do more harm than good for, especially with an agricultural setting. Um, it is such a fine balance and everything needs to be properly balanced to work properly. So. That's the only issue I have with microbial products on the market today. Um, mycorrhiza, like Mike, is a little bit different because, you know, most plants are only going to react with maybe four to 10 species of mycorrhiza the fungi, um, especially when it comes down to like the endo and the ecto. Like only trees, I believe, are going to use the ecto. I forget which one is the most usable. Like there's one that's used by 90% of plants, I think the ecto or endo. Do you know Matt? No, I do. I'm just like, oh my no. gosh, no, I totally forget too. Oh shoot. <laughs> I can't remember. I think it's the And you both know not to ask uh, me. So <laughs> <laughs> I think the endo, because it actually like penetrates the roots of the plant itself and then it'll go in search. And then I think the acto is only used by like 10% of plants. Um, so yeah, but it really does come down to variety. And that's kind of what we're trying to focus on now is you know, taking the trillions of living species that are in soil and trying to recreate that as closely as possible with their products. Um, yeah. and a lot of people are doing that today. Okay. Replicating that nice biodiversity within the soil. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So Karen has asked a question. Okay, Matt and Joanne and guest uh, cost. What's the comparison to these other similar products? Is bio super expensive? So it's not super expensive um, because you only have to use it half as often as other fertilizers. It does last twice as long. Um, I'd say it's comparable to other natural products on the market. And especially considering the packaging that we use, it's all compostable, which is considerably more expensive to purchase compared to plastic. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I found it's at least 10 times the cost for packaging the way we do it. Um, so I try and keep it as cost effective as possible because I don't want to make it this thing that's just exorbitantly expensive that only a few people can afford. And, right. um, so yeah, that's kind of why I started doing it for house plants. So I could offer it in smaller packages. Um, and now kind of what we're doing is more people have used it and want larger quantities is offer, you know, bigger sizes for a cheaper price. So that's, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, my goal is to get people using it and kind of experiencing the benefits of it. And, uh, yeah, it's a product that you don't have to use a lot of either. I've seen a lot of products now that go for a similar price that would be used in half the time, at least. 
Um, so yeah, we've had lots of people that have used a like large bag of our fertilizer that's thirty dollars on our websites, and they've covered you know hundred to two hundred plants of that for a few months at least. So it goes quite a long way, which is something we've had to kind of add to the packaging because some people pick it up and say, uh, I don't know if this makes sense with the cost, but when you actually realize how little you have to use and how frequently you have to mm. use it, it makes a lot more sense cost-wise. Yeah. And we do want to say about the, so you can purchase it. Um, if you ask the question, the listener, um, so <laughs> biosnutrients.ca, Karen, yes. and um, by using our code of DTGP, the, down the garden path, um, 15, uh, you'll get, um, 15% off. Your 15%. There you go. There's a 15, 15% off. Um, so there's something you can try. And I know you had said, um, by doing that, that there's the repeat business, like it shows how successful the product is, right? Definitely. Yeah. Once people try it, they love it. Um, which is amazing to see because it's something I've been loving myself for so long. So it's really cool to be able to share that with people and have them see such great benefits from it too. Um, and then for anybody that does want to purchase online, we do offer shipping discounts. So like over $50, we cover a good portion of the shipping and then over hundred dollars, you get free shipping. Um, that's another thing too. I want to make it as cost effective as possible, even mm -hmm. as prices go up with things like we haven't raised our prices for our products, um, which is important to me because yeah, I just want to make it available to people because oh, at the end of the day, I'm trying to make a difference and just mm -hmm. educate people about the importance of biology and soil and the environmental impacts it can have on a large scale are, you know, amazing. So this is kind of the grassroots movement to supporting that cause and supporting us to be able to provide alternatives for agriculture and horticulture and really make a difference at a large scale. Excellent. Nice. Um, Yep, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I think to also when I when we think of seed starting, like as we're heading into like, you know, the inside gardening kind of season, and not mm -hmm. only house plants, but um, save for and, and a, I would think it would be a good thing for like the seedlings when we get started into make, you know, seeds, seed starting yes. in the spring um, and getting the, you know, that the, even though we're putting little pots of soil into the garden, uh, you know, if that was as nutrient as possible, that would be good. Right. So I do want to let, you know, we've got a lot of fruit and vegetable gardeners out there to know that this is across all kinds of plants. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. And especially for seed starting, that was one big thing, especially with cannabis too, was it's notorious for getting fungal diseases. Mm. So the probiotic was really great for that because you can seed soak in a mixture of the probiotic and the UK extract. They have done studies with UK extract on seed soaking and it has reduced fungal diseases by, I believe it was 80%, 80 or 90%. So it almost eliminates them. And the growth rate was almost doubled from a seed that was not soaked with UK extract. Oh, wow. Uh, so that makes a massive difference. It also allows the water to penetrate the seed much easier so you get better germination rates. And then the nice thing about using the probiotic with that as well is that you're getting that biology right away. So I know a lot of people will use compost teas to soak their mm -hmm. seeds in first to just coat them in that beautiful biology and get them the best start as possible and protect their new roots from disease because they are the most vulnerable when they're young. So yeah, using you know the yucca and the probiotic during that stage is extremely important for the health of your plant and the development as it goes on. Excellent. Good. I know we were talking more about the BIOS, um, the fertilizer, but do you want to talk a little bit more, a little bit synopsis of the time is always flying about the yucca, <laughs> sure. e yucca extract? Yeah, it, absolutely. You know. Yeah. So kind of give a rundown of what it is. So mm -hmm. ancient cultures used to use the roots of this plant as a natural soap, a shampoo. Um, so what we have done basically is got a very potent extract of that. And it lowers the surface tension of water is kind of scientifically what it does. And surface tension of water is very high. When you look at a car that's been freshly waxed, it, the water just beads up and rolls off. That is because it has a high surface tension and leaves are also very waxy. So when you spray leaves with water, the water just beads up and rolls right off, which isn't great when you're trying to apply a foliar spray because you want it to coat the surface, especially if you're trying to get rid of insects, you want to coat the insect with whatever you're spraying. So that is what I started using yucca for was to make foliar sprays more effective. So you simply add it to your water, like a tiny, tiny amount, and then add whatever you want to use the foliar spray for. So you can add in, you know, your pesticide or your foliar feed, 
And the combination of that is just going to be very effective. It's going to coat the leaves nice and evenly. Um, it's going to help get rid of pests and insects because it can coat the entire body of them. And then the other great thing is the hydrophobic fixing. So when peat moss becomes hydrophobic, water has such a high surface tension that it can't flow into the dried particles of peat moss. So that's why it just doesn't accept water anymore. But when you add the yucca extract to the water, it now reduces that surface tension so they can effectively flow into the pores of that growing medium and rehydrate it very quickly. So that's what it's amazing for, making foliar sprays more effective, rehydrating your growing mediums. And because it lowers that surface tension, roots actually have an easier time at absorbing that water. And the more water that your plants can absorb, the more nutrients they absorb, because that is their vehicle for absorption. Oh, so nutrients can only be absorbed with the absorption of water. Yeah. Very cool. Um, mm -hmm. So there's the yucca, yucca extract. We've got our bios. And then what was the other one? The probiotic. A probiotic, <laughs> yes. Yes. So it is a mix of lactic acid bacteria is the main bacteria that we use for it. And then we stabilize that with cane sugar. Uh, right. The reason we use cane sugar is because it's full of different minerals. So it's going to give your plants a really nice boost and it's going to help develop flowers in the plants. The lactic acid bacteria will produce acids that fungus doesn't like. So that was my powdery mildew fix for growing cannabis because mold is just so prevalent in Southern Ontario for growing cannabis because it mm -hmm. flowers very late. Um, it's just very dense. Um, so yeah, that's what I was using to basically prevent any kinds of mildew buildup on my leaves and in the bud. Um, so it's amazing for any kind of fungal prevention and just increasing your yields because leaves are very efficient at absorbing micronutrients. So when you add the probiotic, they're going to be able to instantaneously absorb that and just help develop their fruit even faster. Amazing. Wow. So a three-pronged approach at keeping the yes. plant and the <laughs> soil at maximum health. Absolutely. For sure. So <laughs> everybody needs to head over to biosnutrients.ca and or .com, uh, depending on if you're in Canada or the United States. Uh, you also, as you just log on to the website, you have an offer that pops up that maybe those who might be skeptical would be interested in. Yes. Yeah. So we have a free sample offer, which is great. Um, because we found that a lot of people were hesitant, you know, especially with the fuzz or just getting into living soils. So our big thing was if you try it, it's going to show you how well it works and it just makes that big of a difference. So if you want to try a free sample, head over to our website, type in your email, use the DTGP15 code when you check out so that we know that you're getting the free sample from down the garden path from Matt and Joanne here. And we'll send you a free sample of our products. You can try it out. It'll be the fertilizer. It'll be enough for a plant in a six inch pot. You can see how it works. Usually we notice results in seven to 10 days for a lot of indoor plants. Um, so it happens very quickly. And then if you love it, head on over and use the coupon code to get 15% off your next order. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. And we are very happy and excited to uh, partner with you and promote this wonderful uh, natural product. Joanne, or like Joanne had said, we've got ours, we're applying ours in the house, and uh, <laughs> we are just excited to see the, the wonderful results. So I'll have to get all the other ones, get the Absolutely. trifecta going, and uh, <laughs> yes. keep reporting back on That's the right. bio's nutrients. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's funny you guys you, on Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> because also for the cuttings, because I've, I've been, uh, I trimmed my um, uh, rubber tree plant and I'm trying to, you know, so I've had it all then and they're not rooting. Like I had to move them today because they're in the, they're where we get the Southern window, but I've mm -hmm. been cracking the window open for cooler nights too. So I'm like, I yeah. said to my husband, I've <laughs> got to move these plants because they're not going to be liking the cold. And, <laughs> and sure. then I, I kind of lifted and tested a few of my plants and they're not rooting. So that I'm definitely heading over to, to, tonight to, um, I move them into the dining room where it's be warmer. <laughs> and then I'm going to mix some uh, of the bios in with the, the plants. And maybe I won't do one and we can have a weekend of a race, Aaron. And kind of uh, that'd be great. <laughs> and see, I just that'd love doing awesome. that kind of stuff. So that's my kind of science. So I like doing that kind of uh, test cases of, Beautiful. of that. So I'm excited because it's not working what I've been doing. So yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see how that goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. As we reach the last couple of minutes of the show before we go, Aaron, we want to give you a chance. Is there anything that you would like to promote, shout out, an upcoming event, anything 
it's your time <laughs> for sure thank you uh so yeah we've got the toronto flower market this saturday mm-hmm. um from 10 till 3 that's going to be a great event so come on down say hello we are going to have a new product there which we're going to test out so i made a natural pesticide last year and it's been aging for a year which is part of the process because it increases in potency over the course of 12 months um so it is a herbal pesticide so it is a specially fermented mix of licorice root garlic ginger um, angelica roots a bunch of healing herbs and they are a very potent natural pesticide and soil tonic so they basically kind of fix up any diseases that are in your soil so i have that available um and yeah i guess kind of the final thing would be the you know difference that biology can have on the environment is amazing soil is an amazing absorber of carbon dioxide and we are destroying the life in our soil through tillage and through chemical products Mm -hmm. um so you know by learning a little bit more about how biology interacts with plants and how it works with soil i think we can really make a big impact on the absorption of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere and just you know healthier food for all and healthier environments so that would kind of be the biggest thing just you know this is a great hands-on education of what biology and soil can do not only for the growth of your plant but the environment so i'm very excited for you guys to experience it oh thank you that's great <laughs> wonderful yes yeah, so we hope all of our listeners head over to biosnutrients uh, dot com and uh, get their free sample don't forget dtgp15 code let aaron know uh, where you heard about it and yes. uh, experience the biology and that wonderful microbiology that we love so much and we talk about on the show. So thank you so much, Aaron, for joining us on the show and uh, sharing your wonderful product and and your soil health knowledge. Uh, A wonderful time here joining us on the show. Thanks again. Anytime. Thanks for having me, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Well, we will have you back, I am sure. Thank you. (laughs) And thank you, everybody who has tuned in here live, uh, as well as if you're listening later in the week on uh, downloaded podcast to Down the Garden Path here on Reality Radio 101. We look forward to talking to everybody next week uh, with a brand new episode. Don't forget to check us out at the Toronto Flower Market this coming Saturday, 1001 Queen Street West. Joanne, Aaron, and myself will be there. We look forward to seeing you. We hope you all have a wonderful week and uh, keep growing. Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your host Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing right here on Reality Radio 101.